Thank you this afternoon for tuning in. Welcome to Hickory Grove United Methodist Church online service. Remember, we have three services, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. 10 o'clock is the morning service, blended service where you can see our church being, you know, dramatizing the, the, uh, the conglomeration of Black, white, Hispanic, Latino, the multi ethnic cultural church. And then 11 is the Latino, and 12 is the African service. We want you to tune in every Sunday. Just go to Hickory Grove UNC Facebook page and click on it, and you will see us. We want to welcome you again to our service this Sunday. <laughs> Instructions. 
on the sixth day, they are to bring in twice as much as usual and prepare it. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, this evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. In the morning you will see the dazzling light of the Lord's presence. He has heard your complaints against him. Yes, against him, because we are only carrying out his instructions. Then Moses said, it is the Lord who will give you meat to eat in the evening and as much bread as you want in the morning because he has heard how much you have complained against him. When you complain against us, you are really complaining against the Lord. Moses said to Aaron, tell the whole community to come and stand before the Lord because he has heard their complaints. As Aaron spoke to the whole community, they turned toward the desert, and suddenly the dazzling light of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the complaints of the Israelites. Tell them that at twilight they will have meat to eat, and in the morning they will have bread, all that they want. Then they will know that I, the Lord, am their God. In the evening, a large flock of, flock of quail flew in, enough to cover the camp. And in the morning, there was dew all around the camp. When the dew evaporated, there was something thin and flaky on the surface of the desert. It was as delicate as frost. When the Israelites saw it, they didn't know what it was and asked each other, what is it? Moses said to them, this is the food that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of God for the people of God. Now, thanks, thanks be to God. God. I want to thank Pastor George for his for the scripture reading. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this hour. We hide on your cross, that your cross will be lifted up, O oh God. Touch our lips, O oh God, that ears we hear and heart will receive. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We have been dealing with the book of Exodus. Uh, we went from chapter 12 to 14, and now today we are doing 816. As we heard the scripture reading, and as we were studying and perusing the, the text, we came up with a theme, the bread of life. Last week, in chapter 14, we learned that the Israelites complained at the Red Sea, and the Lord came and delivered them miraculously out of the hands of the Egyptians. But not only that, he also destroyed their enemies. In chapter 15, they again continued to complain when they reached the oasis of Mara, where the water was bitter and they could not drink the water. They began to grumble and complain and say a lot of things that would make Moses to feel bad or to be discouraged or to be guilty of why he brought them out of Egypt. And why they were complaining, God steps in and, and told Moses to take a piece of wood and drop it in this river, in this water, so that it can be drinkable for the people. And Moses did just that, and the Bible says that the, the bitter water turned into a sweetening water that they could drink. And then the Lord has showed Israelites that he will heal them of diseases, but if they want to earnestly listen and do the things that are right in his eyes. And he will keep all and keep all his statutes and commandments. And now our text for today. The bread of life. My brothers and sisters, bread meat and wine has been a part 
of human history. It has been a sustainable food for mostly those who live in what we call the Middle East and North Africa today. Bread became a stable meal for them. These people moved from place to place near the river. They were farmers and they were those, they were people that raised cattle. And you know, through farming, through the crops, through the fruits, you can, you can get flowers, and flowers can make bread. But let me let you know, it is not a bread that we eat today that has a whole lot of flour, a whole lot of yeast, a whole lot of ingredients that can bring sickness upon us. But this, this bread was a bread that has no sugar, that has nothing that could harm your body, but everything in it could, could uh, nourish you and make you more healthy. My brothers and sisters, at this time, the Bible says that they were at Elah. And then God told them to move forward to a town, a desert town called Sin. And this town was between Elah and Sinai in the wilderness, in the desert, where there was no, no water, no, 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 no guiding, no, no farms. It was just an empty, big, wasted, desert, hot land. At this time, it has been one month since the children of Israel left Egypt. The Israelites went back to their old usual behavior by complaining and grumbling about food. My brothers and sisters, with everything the Lord has done for the Israelites and to, for them to still be complaining and grumbling, is so disheartening. This takes place Israel of being ungrateful. My brothers and sisters, we find people in our lives, in our churches, in our family, in our community that will complain about every and anything that the leader does. Amen. But remember now, those people are the people that when you put them into a community, over a community, try to do something that will be the one not to do anything but sit down and continue to complain. <laughs> you see, my brothers and sisters, instead of them complaining and grumbling, it would have been better for them to come and meet with Moses to resolve their concern. The Bible says that after their complaining and, and their grumbling parade, the Lord said to Moses, I will feed them with bread from heaven. You see, sometimes when we are complaining against our leaders, it is not our leaders that we are complaining against, but we are complaining about the Lord who placed them over us. Yeah. You see, because this text shows us that they were complaining and they were still complaining to God. They were not quarreling on God, they were not grumbling on God, but they were grumbling against their leaders. But you see, when God plays someone over you, whether they are your pastor or they are your, your community leader or senior pastor, assistant pastor, whoever God plays over you, when you start to complain, when you start to grumble, it is not that person you are complaining of, but you are complaining about the man who plays them over you. My brothers and sisters, why they were complaining, God called Moses and said, I will feed them, I will bring bread from heaven unto them. And then God told Moses, tell them, each day they should go out and take enough for that day. And on the sixth day they should take twice to prepare meal for themselves. And this I will test them to see if they will follow my instruction. The bread of life. So after Moses told them, Moses had to remind them, the Israelites, the, the congregation of Israel, how the mighty hands of the Lord brought them out of Egypt. Yes, sometimes when people are complaining, you have to remind them what you are doing, what God has for them and for God. Yes, 
When God told them he was sent a manna, they didn't believe it because when they saw it, the Bible said that they said, what is this? But you see, the text told us that the manna did not just come ordinarily, but it came through the glory of God. My brothers and sisters, when God is ready to bless you, when he is ready to provide for you, it comes in the, in the form of his glorious might unto us. The man, the bread came in his glory. The man was in the midst of God's glory. The dew represented the glory of God. It came to fill the Israelites. It came to quench their hunger. Yes, the Lord gave them strength through the bread. Because you see, when you are hungry, there's no way you can gain strength. You see, the God gave them the energy to move forward. It was as a promise to God because he said, I will feed them, I will bring bread from heaven. He said, I will bring meat unto them. So you see, the bread was in the morning for their breakfast and their lunch and their brunch. Then came at twilight. As we said last week, twilight means from 3 to 6 or 5, 5.30 to 6. And then at twilight, he brings a dinner. A chicken, a bird, big bird that had already been baked. Uh, they have already went on the grill and been charcoal grill. Right. Perhaps that bread was seasoned more than any cocoa season. It came down so that they can have dinner and go to bed. My brothers and sisters, God gave them quill for dinner to balance the meal. The Lord knows what to give his children. Mm -hmm. When you ask him for bread, he does not give his stone. The bread in the wilderness is a short term for hunger. It is only there to fill you just for a time. It is only there to fill you just for a day or for two days. It is only there to fill you for a few hours and you will be hungry again. But I see there is a bread that is for eternity. There is a bread of life that he, and that bread of life is Jesus. This bread fills you forever. Jesus is the true man from God to man. He tells us in John 6, 35, he said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger again. My brothers and sisters, this bread, when you eat of it, you will never go hungry. Come and taste this bread of life. Come and have a bite of this bread of life. This bread is Jesus. This bread our Lord of Lord, come and taste of him, and you will never go hungry, you will never go thirsty anymore. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. For Yes, he 
inform us. The wisdom of the Son enlighten us, and the fire of the Holy of the Spirit kindle us. And may the blessing of the Lord God come down upon us and remain with us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the blessed Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you next week. Do not forget 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, Hickory Grove UNC, our Facebook page. Come and let us bless and worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.